Welcome to a brand new section. And in this section, we're going to be creating our first JavaScript library. In the process, we're going to learn about defining namespaces and how to create private variables in JavaScript, or pseudo private, but really variables that no one else could access. We're also going to look at the modal design pattern. This all connects together as we build a library with version controlling. Really, by the end of this section, we're just going to have a full blown library. It's going to be based off of the previous sections that we worked on. So let's get right into it as we start working with defining a namespace. Defining a namespace, really the goal of it is to avoid overriding other people's code or even our own. The idea is to create a naming convention that will help us then protect our files better and create a little bit of organization so not everyone is trying to approach the same variable names out there, which is very common when you're trying to load in a few scripts you've created if you're not working in a strategic way where you're not exposing too many variables out there to the scope. So we're going to create a namespace. We're going to learn what that is. We're going to see how to work with it. And we're going to really start building the library skeleton. So let's get started. I already went ahead and loaded our new G. Actually, the characters are going to be GQ. And I'm going to load GQ1 for now because we're going to use this just as a quick sample. As we're starting to build our own library, really our first step here is to take all this mishmash of code that we have in our script file and to convert it into something that's a little bit more object oriented, a little bit more easy to create some naming closures. Because really, when we're looking at our document right now, we have here a variable called Q. Anyone could override it, and also not only could anyone override it, someone might have already been using that variable. So what we want to go ahead is and create a more robust naming convention. And we're going to split this idea into two lectures, and we're going to start with this one talking about namespaces, which is something that is borrowed from the object-oriented world. Now the idea behind it is that we're going to basically create a variable, but we're not going to just right away create the variable com. Because really what I want to do is I want to create here a path such as com dot my domain name and then um, the name of our library, which is GQ. So that's going to be really our path where I want to go. Before I could create this path, I literally what I want to do is I want to go step by step and say, OK, does com object exist? If it does, great. Leave it the way it is. If not, fill it up with a brand new object, which will be basically an empty we're just creating that empty dot variable. The next step after that, we want to go into that com folder, I'm calling it folder because it really acts like a folder. And I want to go into that object and basically check if that object has an object inside that's called O2Geek. I'm doing this in uppercase, but really the naming convention here is really just based on what you feel is right. In this case, because I'm using here O and O. Really, it was supposed to be zero, so I set it as lowercase so it won't be confusing. So I'm going to go ahead and just add here another object. Now, once I've done this, I literally created here backup. And if the folder exists already, if the objects are already exist, then I'm not going to create them all over, making it a lot easier for me to create a really rich library with a lot of different types of elements and, and items inside of it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to continue on and really define this GQ. And I'm not going to complete this sample. I'm just going to go ahead and put here some pseudo code. And it's kind of inspired by jQuery, where jQuery in, gets in the selector and the context and then returns to us the item that we're fetching. Our kind of like to be done really in the next sample, we're going to start working on it as we work on a different type of, of enclosure. But once we've created our base function, we could even go ahead and just continue it. And it's very similar to what jQuery does, although we're going to see in the next lecture how to really, and by the way, you see here that uh, this uppercase lowercase situation made a little typo. So I, literally what I'm doing is I'm just starting off from the complete function that I have there. And functions in JavaScript are literally objects as well. So I could go ahead here and create here a load.js, not even creating instantiation process because really what I'm doing here is I'm really making something that is not instantiated. It's a one off. There's no need to instantiate it. And by doing this, and I'm going to just put here a couple of, you know, to be continued, we could create a really robust library. Now, I'm not going to continue on doing this. And one of the reasons why I'm not going to do it is because our GQ is really just like jQuery. We want it to be smack in the middle right there as soon as the user starts our application. 
Beyond that, we also don't want to put anything onto the screen until we know that we could put it there. Really, in this case, we are doing these measurements and securities. But what we're going to do in the next lecture, we're going to learn really an, another way of doing this, enabling us to create private variables, something that is not really doable in JavaScript, something that will be private only to our class, and not anything else that we don't want having access to it won't have access to it. All right, so in this lecture, we really built out and saw how to work with namespaces. And in the next lecture, we're walking away from namespaces in favor of something way better and really cool. And in the process, we're going to learn how to create private variables in JavaScript. So next lecture is the woozy. It's wonderful. And it's going to be really leading us on throughout the rest of the section.